Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with number 4 in the series The Rook Rules. And the Rook Rules in this game between the 4th world champion Alexander Aljochin against Grigory Levenfish, played in St. Petersburg in 1912. So at the time that this game was played, Aljochin was not world champion. The world champion at the time was Lasker. Aljochin only became champion 15 years later in 1927. Aljochin won this tournament with 7 points, ahead of Levenefisch who had 6.5. And, and Aljochin opened with d4 and c5 from his opponents. Grigory Yakovlevich Levenefisch was a Polish-born Russian chess grandmaster who scored his peak competitive results in the 1920s and 1930s. He was twice Soviet champion. That's no mean feat in 1934 and 1937. And also in 1937, he drew a match against future world champion Mikhail Botvinnik. And he also had a career as an engineer. And when this game was played, he was 23 years old. And he played c5 on the first move. Aljochin pushed the pawn. Knight f6. And here c4 is the main move in the databases. But knight c3 was played in 1912 by Aljochin. d6, e4, g6. Played with the obvious plan to move that bishop to g7. But as we'll see, that bishop will never get to the g7 square. Quite remarkable. Here knight f3 is the main move. But Aljochen played the more aggressive f4. Again, bishop g7 makes a lot of sense here. But Levenefisch developed the knight first. Knight bd7. Knight f3. And... Again, bishop g7 makes sense, but a6 was played. And that is not a good move. Black should really have played bishop g7 and castle is king, king side. But now, when black delays that, Aljochen smells blood and goes for it with e5. The pawn was taken. F takes back, attacking the knight. Knight g4. And Aljochen kept pushing his pawns e6. Attacking the other knight. Knight d to e5. And here, according to the engine, the strongest move is h3. Was not played by Aljochin. You can then not retreat that attack knight because your other knight is hanging. So after h3, the best move is knight takes f3 check. Queen takes. Then knight back to e5, attacking the queen. Queen g3. And for example, bishop g7 and bishop f4. And now the engine gives f6 as the best move, which is a clear indication that something has gone badly wrong for black. You don't want to play f6 here, burying that bishop on g7. All that after knight de5 and then h3. But Ayochen decided on bishop f4 instead. Bishop g7 again makes sense. The knight is attacked twice, but with bishop g7 it's also defended twice. But Levenefish took on f3 instead. We check, and Aljochen took back with the pawn. Attacking the knight, knight back to f6, and bishop c4 to make sure he keeps that pawn on e6. f takes, d takes, and that pawn is now protected by the bishop. That's why that bishop went to c4. And now black could have taken on d1 with check. Rook takes and bishop g7. But that doesn't make things a lot easier for black. He can cancel his king. But his queen side is a big problem. These two pieces are still on their initial squares. And black does not have time for b6 and bishop d b7. Because white's pieces will jump into his position. This is a horrible position for black. So Levenefish decided not to swap the queens. He played queen b6, looking for counterplay against the b2 pawn. He's also attacking the e6 pawn twice now, and it's only defended once. So Aljochen really has to keep that pawn to keep his advantage. So he played queen e2. The pawn is now protected twice. Queen takes b2. There is this saying in chess, never take on b2, not even if it's a good move. And in this case, it is not a good move. But there's only one refutation. And Levenefish must have missed that move. It's not very obvious. The only winning move for white is now knight b5. What a move. 
the rest, any other option does not really work for white. The big threat here is knight c7. We'll see it in the game as well. So we'll see what happens then a bit later. What happens if you take that knight, a takes b5? Well, then there is bishop takes b5 check, protected by the queen on e2. King d8 and rook d1 check. And black is toast, as they say. Five pieces are attacking the black king. And he only has two defenders around, and that's not enough. This will lead to a win for white. So what to do then after knight b5? Black saw nothing better than taking that rook in the corner, which is unprotected, with check. And after king f2, he took the other rook as well. A double rook sacrifice makes us think about the immortal game of Anderson against Kizeritsky. And Al Jochen's rooks rule, even though they have not made a move and are both off the board. They sacrifice themselves for the other pieces. A beautiful double rook sacrifice, because now we see white did not need the rooks and has a winning attack with his remaining pieces. Knight c7 check. King d8. Queen d2 check. And you have to interpose something on d7. Bishop d7. And e takes d7 on the 19th move. And Levenfisch resigned here. What a crushing win with a double rook sacrifice from the future world champion. Quite incredible. Why did he resign? What's happening here? Well, the threat is knight e6 checkmate. That's a beautiful checkmate. So you have to do something against that. So knight takes d7. Seems to make sense. That gives the black king a flight square. But then bishop e6. And now the threat is queen takes d7 checkmate. So king c8. Queen takes d7 check anyway. King b8. And can you see the mate in one move? The knight goes back to where he came from. Knight b5 is checkmate. Discover check by the bishop. And the knight takes the a7 square away. Very beautiful checkmate. This is a very pretty picture. Just look at black's pieces. The queen all the way far away from the action on h1. Both rooks still in their initial position, as is this bishop. And the king checkmated on b8. Wonderful. Alexander Aljochin. What a game. Hope you enjoyed this game and that you enjoy the series of the Rook rules and all those other pieces that rule. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel and please leave a comment if you like the video and if you like this series. It would be great if you could share it on social media by clicking the share button on YouTube. The link to the series of the Rook rules and the other pieces that rule is in the description box of this video. This is Rick for Chess to Impress. Thank you for watching.